Hi, this is Greg Benz with another quick Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make Photoshop dramatically easier to use by customizing the menus. When you look through the different options in Photoshop, the first thing you see is there are just a ton of different options. There are menus, there are submenus, there are even submenus to some of the submenus. And so it's no wonder that folks get confused, but this is sort of the inevitable result of 25 years of adding new features for photographers, graphic designers, web developers, and a whole range of other users. So this is what makes Photoshop so powerful, but it's also what makes it somewhat difficult to learn and to use. But the engineers at Adobe get this and they've given us an awesome tool to deal with that. And that is the ability to customize the menus in Photoshop. If you go up to the edit menu and go down to menus, you get this interface that allows you to completely customize the menus in Photoshop. Every single menu you see up top is represented by the options here, and you can drill down and change the ones you want. So let's say, for example, that I'm a big fan of some of the filters for photography. I can just simply open this up, go in and start changing the options. I have two things I can change. I can hide a menu option. So for example, if I don't want to look at 3D and vanishing point, and lens correction, I can simply turn those off and those will disappear from the menu now. And let's say that liquify is a filter I really like. So I'm gonna color that green and let's go down and let's just look at a few more options here. Perhaps I do a lot of sharpening with the unsharp mask and smart sharpen. So let's go ahead and make smart sharpen be green. But this isn't a sub menu, which we can see by the indent here. So I'm gonna make sharpen be green as well. So this is sort of the menu and then the, the sub menu option here. And let's just see what we've done already. So when I hit okay, if I go up to the filter menu, here are the options we changed. We made liquify be green and sharpen as well as smart sharpen underneath it be green. Now the menu options we hit are of course gone, but one really nice thing that Adobe has done is you can still get to them by simply clicking show all menu items at the bottom. So when I click on that, the vanishing point, lens correction, etc., comes back. So we have all these options. There's also one other way you can get to that. And that is if I simply click on a menu, it will by default show none of the hidden options. But if I hold command or control and click on the menu, then it's already showing it. So I can either use that show button at the bottom or I can control or command click on the menu and I'll see everything. So as you can see, looking through the options here, sorry, wrong one. Uh, as we look through the options in menu, there are a ton of different options. So you can go crazy on this. And I certainly invite you to, to make all the changes you want. When you're done, you can simply hit the save or save as options uh, and you can delete and basically the different options will show up here. So this would be, let's say I save this and this is gonna be my new menus and I'll just save that. So now this shows up as an option. So I can go back to the originals by hitting Photoshop defaults. And when I say okay, then everything is back to the way it originally was. But I can go and easily turn that on or switch between different menus by choosing here. And now when I go back, I'll have those options again. So they've made it really easy to customize everything to be visible or various different colors. And then you can save everything in different menu options. And in fact, you can even take this one step further. And that is you may or may not use what's called a flyout menu on some of your panels. But if you look at the, the various different panels, for example, if we open up uh, channels, you'll see there's these three little bars on the top right of every panel. No matter where you put it, they're always here. Wherever you may be stashing this, they're always gonna have those three little bars. And when you click on it, you have different options. I work with the layers a lot and you have all these different options. And these can also get a little bit overwhelming on you know some of the more popular panels like layers. So you can go and adjust these as well. So go to edit menus and just change from application menus. Application menus are all these options up top over to panel menus, which are these little flyouts on the panel. So if I now just go down to the panel, I want to change 
In this case, let's go down to the layers palette and let's say that I like to duplicate my layers a lot. So let's make that green. And um, let's say I wanna turn a few of these off. And one cool thing, when you hide things, you can also change their color if you just do this first. So I'm gonna make this red and then hide it. Same thing with a few of these other options. And what I'm doing is that color is not going to show up until I show the hidden items, but because I made it red, it'll make it really easy for me to see what did I hide. So let's just try that right now. So when I click on this menu, I can now see the green option. And just like before, I've got show all menu items. I can see the hidden items. And when I click that, now I see them pop out in red. And I just like that approach because it makes it very easy for me to see when I show the hidden options, where are they? So really good flexible tools. If you right click, unfortunately these menu options you cannot customize. So it's just simply gonna be when you use this menu up top here, but it does give you a ton of flexibility here and obviously in all the various menu options above. And like I said, you can go crazy on this. There's about 500 menu options up top for my estimates. I don't even know how many more you'd add for all the uh, various panels. So you could really spend a lot of time. And in fact, I recently on a flight home from uh, London spent about six hours completely overhauling my own menus. And I am happy to share that with all my subscribers. If you just go to gregbensphotography.com slash newsletter and by signing up, you'll get a free copy of this custom menu that I've created here. And installing these menus is very, very easy you'll get a file that just says Greg Ben's Photoshop menus.mnu. This will work on essentially uh, CS6 or newer. I'm not sure about older versions. I haven't tested that on both Mac and Windows. And you can simply right click and choose to open with the version of Photoshop you want if you have more than one version of Photoshop. Or you can just double click on the file to open in the default version of Photoshop. So I've made some changes to my menu. So Photoshop's just asking if I wanna save them. And there's nothing important that I've done there, so I'm going to choose not to save. And it's already loaded the menus. When I go and look now, you'll see all of the customizations that I've made to my menus. And I use sort of a multicolor system. So you'll see items in green, and these are the options that I consider most important for photography. And everything I've done here is for photography. Options in yellow are also important, but a little bit less so. And gray is just sort of other stuff. And then we have these things in blue, and these are basically Photoshop settings, such as the menus or the other color calibration, things that you wouldn't change on a per image basis. You're not gonna edit images with these options. These are just general Photoshop setup. And then lastly, we have the show all menu items. And when I click that, I've done everything that's been hidden in red. So you can very quickly see a ton of options have been hidden in some of these. Uh, for example, on the layers menu, if I show all menu items, you can see the original list of options went almost all the way down this image here versus the shortened version I've created here. Uh, really cuts down the, the size of the menus by about a third and helps call out the most important options. And as I said, this is designed for photographers. If you're into 3D work, you'll see I've basically hidden everything. If you do a lot of graphic design, I've turned off some of the typesetting options or web development. But this isn't necessarily going to be a menu that works for everybody. This is designed specifically for photography. But if you do photography, I would encourage you to try it out. And you can also customize everything I've done here. So if you don't like exactly what I've done, perhaps you don't like the fact that I hid the filter gallery, which I hid because it doesn't work with 16 bit images. You can go and turn that back on. Once you've loaded my menus, just simply go to edit menus. And just as we did before, go dive into whatever you want to change. Make the uh, appropriate changes to it and hit OK or do a, a save or save as. So I could just simply, you know, save for uh, uh, Greg version two or whatever you want to call it. And I'll have all the different options so I can easily go back uh, to the originals if I ever want to. or work with the options I've downloaded for you or customize to your heart's content. But point is that by editing these menu options, you can really make Photoshop much, much easier to use. 
to quickly get to the commands that matter most. Because while there may be 500 or so options in the menus, chances are there's probably less than 50 that you're ever gonna use on the, the vast majority of your images. And customizing these menus a little bit, uh, even if you're familiar with the menus, can really save a lot of time. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please make sure to uh, sign up for my newsletter and YouTube channel to get more tutorials. Thanks.